Hello, Dr. David Hyde, Master GP Templates. In this video, I'm going to give you five quick tips to make your medical reflections that bit better, regardless of what background you're reflecting against. Before we go any further, a bit of safety advice. Confidentiality shouldn't have to be said, but please, please, please do not put any patient identifiable information uh, inside your reflection, because this obviously is relatively uh, or has the potential to be public. So make sure that you limit to what you're saying. Second part is that if you're dealing with any complaints or anything that go to a lawsuit, just be very, very careful what you're reflecting against. And make sure that it's not getting you into any further trouble, as there have been cases where reflections have been brought into coroner's court and also in the law courts to demonstrate what the doctor was thinking and how they acted. So just take those bit of safety bits of advice first. Right, with the safety out the way, let's do on to tip number one. Tip number one, have a structure set to it. GMC recommends that you do the what, so what, now what. I'm going to build upon that. What I've been recommended to do is utilize the Christmas tree model. Christmas tree model is showing that regardless at the top of the reflection, that you put very, very short information and keep it pithy, snappy and to the point. So your what should be two, three sentences about the situation that happened and really no more. It shouldn't make the majority of your reflection as that's not what we're interested in and why we're reflecting. The majority of the wealth and the information should come from the so what and then the now what as that Christmas tree broadens towards the base. The so what so really start to think about how it emotionally affected you okay how did you feel at the time how did it influence you as a practitioner and then leading on to the now what how are you going to use this situation that has occurred to take yourself forward to improve yourself as a clinician regardless of your background so that if this event were to happen again or something similar that you don't make the same mistakes again or that you've clearly demonstrated that you're able to sort of protect yourself from it okay so that you don't burn out or dissolve to it tip number two why are you doing this why are you doing this reflection you must be able to be aware of the curriculum you're trying to hit and make sure that it's a clear demonstration of that often the colleges or whatever you're using will give clear guidance for what they're looking for go on their website have a look at it i'll leave a couple of links down below to the rcgp website which sort of gives a bit of bulk about what they're looking at this then feeds into the capability demonstration that will have certain key areas and topics that they want to really have a look at and show that you're uh, progressing as a clinician, that you're able to function appropriately. Tip number three, practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the better you become as a reflector and it will start to hone your craft. It is a skill after all, and the only way to do it is to get numbers under your belt. Do not let excellence get in the way of good. What I mean by that is, is do not spend hours upon hours crafting one single reflection. Get more and more under your belt. Take multiple of them to your supervisor and say, look, I've got these five, ten reflections. What works well? What doesn't work well? And so you can start to develop as yourself. Okay. Tip number four, it's about habit formation. Pick a day that works for you and ensure that on that day you're reflecting on it. Make it easy for yourself to reflection. If you're in a GP surgery and you're sat at a computer, make sure your portfolio is open up either on one of the tabs or behind it. So if there's something interesting happens, you can at least get the what happened down, knowing that you can fill in the so what and now what a bit later on down the line. Which leads me on to tip number five, 48 hour rule. It can be tedious when you're a week or two down the line and you've only just half written a reflection and you just need to finish it off. Make sure that you're disciplined enough to have 48 hours absolute maximum to make sure that your reflection is done in a timely manner and that they're finished and wrapped on and then you move on. Okay, bonus tip time. Do not be afraid to get more than one outcome from one reflection. And what I mean by that is, is that if something occurred, say, for example, you got shouted out in hospital because the consultant thought that you should know something and you didn't. There are two points that can come out of that. One is an education point. OK, so you didn't know this bit of knowledge. You didn't know something about the patient. OK, you've gone away. You read upon it. And this is how it's going to change you in future. The next time you see a patient with this condition, you will need to do uh, you will know that you will need to do X, Y and Z, A, B, C. Happy days. The second part from that is. A bit of management stuff the consultant shouted at you as an educational way now thankfully this is becoming a rarity but unfortunately still happens how did that make you feel would you then want to teach a junior when you're in a position of power that way would you shout at them do you think that works how other ways could you teach it 
Okay, leaning on from getting more than one reflection from one point is think about that sort of the next step. If you've learned something, will that then bring into something into your practice, i.e. has it led to an audit? Has it led to a quality improvement idea? Have you put up a poster about it? OK, from this way, then you've got then suddenly a next reflection and link the two. See my reflection that I did a month ago about reading about sore throats. I've now done a patient information leaflet on sore throats. Here's the patient information leaflet. This is how I reflect upon it. OK, and then second bonus point, because I'm lovely like that. Reflect on this video. This is an educational video. What have you learned from this video? I watched a video about someone banging on about medical reflections. So what? This made me think that, hang on a second, you've got some really good points. I'll make sure that I'll set a day to do at least one and that will really improve my ability and my functionality of doing this. Or have you gone like, well, actually, why is he on YouTube? He's banging on about something that's really easy. Why aren't I on YouTube and do it? Give it a go. Have a look around, see what you feel. Now, what? what's your next step? I will make sure that I have a regular habit of reflecting upon uh, what's happened to me, etc, etc. Well, hope you found this being useful. Uh, I'm Dr. Dave Highmarsh. Please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Uh, I'll be seeing you later on. Many thanks.